Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Deep Roots Movement. We are continuing on with our Nebi Nut Alayhi Salam series. We are picking up where we left off on uh, the last video was a part one and part two of 40 Days of Dajjal and the Deluge. Now this one is called Rapture and the Ark of the Heart. Um, first off, really quickly, like someone pointed out to me that, that the word Dajjal or Dajjal seems to be connected to the word digital almost. And that's kind of an interesting connection perhaps. I don't know for sure, but I'm open to these possibilities. I think we should, we, we, we should consider all possible possibilities. All right, so now let's think about rapture and the Ark of the Heart. Now in the Ark of the Heart video, a few videos ago, I discussed that, that one aspect of our maturation and what, what, what saves us from the deluge against evil is, creating a, is, is generating a protective force field against um, immorality and, 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 and devil tech, you know, um, and, you know, so we actually take a stand and we, we create a fence around ourselves of morals and ethics. And, and as we, as we go through Toba, turning away from the evil, corrupt world and make hijra of the heart and go through the Tezkiya process of purifying our bodies and minds and purifying our environment of anything that's, of, of anything that is an unethical and impure input, um, you know, like GMO um, foods and drinks and body products and cleaning and, and harmful cancer causing cleaning products. So we leave these things behind. So we create a fence to protect ourselves against harmful and toxic um, inputs. And we also protect the outer world from contributing to its toxicity because we don't want to put harmful, toxic outputs out into the world. Also, even though this fence is up, this protective field, we also have, a, we, we open our heart to all of Allah's interconnected creation. And we accept all of, all of the creatures, all of the flora, the fauna, all of humanity. We realize that they're, well, first off, they're already within us. They're literally already within our clay and our water. They're already programmed into us. They're within our heart. Our heart is the connecting point to all, all of creation. So, and we do have a way of extending protection to others. This is, this is a, you know, a deeper spiritual reality that maybe we can get into at some point, inshallah. But um, so we're, we're building this ark and we're also calling people to Toba and Tezkiah and, and as devotedly and as wholeheartedly and sincerely as possible, we are making Toba and Tezkiah ourselves. And we want to we want to come out of our dark night of the soul, our long dark night of the soul, and we want to be rectified and we want to be made whole. To be made whole, the whole making process is a healing process. This is healing our bodies, healing our minds, holing, making whole our bodies and our minds. Um, you know, and in, 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 in healing our relationships. Um, so this whole making process. Um, so now let's get into this whole thing about the rapture and the arc of the heart. So we've got we've got this arc of the heart that we're that, that we're we're cultivating, we're developing. Now um, remember the 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 deceiver. He there's a great delusion that's come over the people, and people have gone significantly off path, and they have been led to destruction, and, and they will be like largely wiped out. But some of them will be put into a digital arc, some you know, a false spiritual energy, um, and then we've got humans who are saved in in a spiritual arc, so to speak. Now it's interesting that um, so I want to I wanted to speak about something. There's like I study the prophetic tradition all across the world, and I'm open to various inputs as I seek truth. Inshallah, we will always seek and find truth and apply apply it as we receive it and live accordingly and benefit from it and share it with others as we move along. Now, um, I was reading a little bit about, you know, I was just reading through some Wikipedia pages and I, I read about um, one of this, this, this Gnostic text from ancient times that, preserve, that, that preserved a different, a different um, view of of Nabi Nuh alayhi salam's story. And in this story, I believe it was, it was an apocryphon of, uh, of John or something along those lines. I apologize for not, for not writing that down, but this is the point I want to bring up. 
there are many different variations of the Noah story across the world from within the biblical tradition, within the Quranic and, and Hadith tradition, from within the, um, from with many other religions have flood stories and Noah correspondences. We've got, you know, Manu from India, we've got Utnapashtim and, um, and some, you know, um, many other, um, what, Zia Shudra or something along those lines. I'm, I'm probably misremembering. Um, oh no, Zia uh, Surya, I believe, um, from from the Middle East, one of the one of the Sumerian traditions. There are many different versions. There were versions within ancient Greece. These flood myths. It's it's very fascinating. Um, but in this in this Gnostic discussion, and it, it like in this little this little blurb, they were quoting from Elaine Pagels, and she's a she's an expert in in uh, in the Gnostic gospels and the Gnostic religions, and she talks about um, how in this text. It discusses how Noah, so it's like, without going too much into it, they're basically, the Gnostics, they relate that basically there is, what we think of as God in this world is actually an evil deity, an archon. And in some of the Gnostic myths, you have like a, a Satan or Lucifer figure who is the savior of humanity. And it kind of flips, it inverts things the way the Satanists do. I would argue there's some other ways of looking at, at Gnosticism, and, and I, I would love to discuss that in, in another video, inshallah. But in this one, um, Noah is saved by the true God, okay? So this evil archon, this false creator, a demiurge, um, you know, which matches up with kind of the Sumerian myths where you've got like a head God and a bunch of gods with lowercase g's, and they're playing like they're, like they're all law, but they're not. And they, they, they're, they're manipulating us through technology to enslave us and, 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 and to, to, to use us for, for energy, for labor, um, to mine the world. Um, so anyway, so Allah, you know, the, the, the true God, he sends his angels, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, to basically let Noah know what's gonna happen. And then Noah calls the world to repentance. And what's interesting is in this story, um, many humans actually listen and they follow Noah and they, they, they're, they're going to be saved. Now, there is no boat in this story. Instead, they are taken to a hidden secret place where they are protected from the flood. And what they are protected in, it says, it calls humanity the unshakable race, which is fascinating. The unshakable race. That sounds amazing. I, I love that. The unshakable. Um, I also saw some interesting things about you know, the unshakable ones within the Buddhist tradition about the Buddha families, which um, they always depict them as like these Buddhas and they're different colors. And so when I read about the Buddha families, it made me think about, because they were different colors, like you had a, a, you know, a black Buddha and a white Buddha and a yellow Buddha and a red Buddha. And so and maybe a blue or a green one. But anyway, like I automatically thought the different colors of humanity and Buddhas are basically, they are egoless. They're humans in a mature state. And it can be a, a man or a woman can become a Buddha, meaning an awake, you know, an awakened, enlightened human being, a mature human being with beautiful expressions. They're egoless. And um, so it's, it's humanity in our mature state. Um, and by the way, like, you know, in, in Buddhism, they didn't even have statues of the Buddha for the first 500 years. Nobody was worshiping statues. And, and even there's, it's, it's, it's. It's worth discussing Buddha Dhamma in a, in a future video and my view of the, the Buddha Gautama as being a Rasul, okay? Peace be upon him. So we are called the unshakable race in this Gnostic text and we are hidden in a bright cloud. So now let's talk about rapture. In the Christian tradition, starting in the 1800s, there was a new conceptualization of you know, based on Paul's teachings, read, the reading of, of uh, some Pauline texts, I believe from Thessalonians about, you know, like a trumpet being blown and, and um, you know, um, believers.